The Arch Gaming Network is proud to bring you this flash review. Now here's your host, Sean Smith. And I ran, I ran so far away I just ran, I ran all night and day I couldn't get away uh, Guys, you're, you're supposed to let me know when we're rolling We're not rolling, we are rolling Oh, hi, hi everyone uh, uh, well, don't worry about it, uh, guys. We'll we'll cut that out in post production. That that'll be fine. Uh, we can't. What, we can't cut it out in post production. That that doesn't sound right. Uh, well, um, uh, hi everyone. Uh, it's all right. Uh, hi, today uh, we are taking a look at the game uh, Flock. Flock. That that's why I was listening to Flock of Seagulls uh, because today we're taking a look at the game Flock, which is uh, published by AEG. Um, now, uh, Flock is a uh, play game for two to five players, and it is. Uh, kind of, it's a worker placement game and also uh, kind of an area control game where you're going to be placing these birds at different locations, collecting resources to collect other resources. You're going to be fighting it out on a dominance track uh, so that you can get ahead on this scoring track. And then you're going to compete at some point during each round for the most points. And... Uh, after three rounds, whoever has the most points is going to be the winner. So, why don't we take a look at uh, how the game plays, how it's set up, and I'll give you my thoughts on the other side. All right, uh, cut. Are we? Are we good? Are we good? Good. So. Okay, the goal of Flock is to have the highest score at the end of the game. There are a couple of ways that you can get points. Now, the uh, most common way and the best way to gather points is to score points on these five location cards. You'll notice here at the top, each card has two numbers uh, separated by a slash. During the scoring uh, phase of the competition card, if you have the most birds on a particular location, you're going to score the points on the far left. In this case, the feeding would have uh, would give you four points. If you were in second, three points. And you'll do that for each of the cards. The other way that you will score points is if you have any birds left over in your pool uh, during the scoring track or st scoring uh, round, you will also get one point for each bird that you did not use or didn't have out here. So a quick overview of the round is that you uh, need to collect worms and nests so, so that you can lay eggs and hatch birds. You can get the extra birds from here and then you're placing them out here trying to uh, have the most uh, birds on these particular locations. When it comes time to the scoring round, you also are going to be vying for uh, dominance in the game and that is useful during the scoring track and we'll kind of go over all those in just a minute. Now on your turn you can do one of two things. You can either place a bird or activate a card. Now to activate a card you have to already have had a bird on there so obviously in the first round no one will be activating a card. So in this case the uh, red player maybe they're going to go to uh, the nest and then the green player Maybe they're going to go to the feeding. The yellow player also maybe goes to feeding. The red player may go here. And we'll continue to move on. Maybe the red player now will go here. 
and the green player here, and maybe the yellow player here, and now it's back to the red player's turn. Now you can always activate a card instead of placing a bird, like I said earlier. You just have to have a bird on that card to be able to activate it. Since the red player is out of birds, the only way that uh, he can get them back at this point is to activate a card. He only has two cards that he can activate, and he's going to go ahead and activate the nesting card. Now, when that happens, you're going to get the uh, bonus that is marked down here. So if you have two or more birds, on this card, you're going to pick up three nests. The green and the yellow player each have one bird on here, so they'll each get one nest. Regardless of who activated a card, once that card is activated and the bonuses are given out, all birds must fly off of that card. Now it's Green's turn since Red activated that last card. Now Green can either take one of his birds and place it out here, or he can activate one of the cards. The Green player is going to go to the Dominance track for now. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now it's Yellow's turn, and Yellow is going to go ahead and go to the Dominance card. Red player can now uh, maybe add one here. And now the green player is out of bird, so he's going to go ahead and activate the feeding card. So since he has two birds on it, he'll get three worms. The uh, yellow player also has two birds, so that's three worms, and the green player as well. Now for these resources, for the worms, nests, and the eggs, you can never have more than six at any time. And that's six of each kind, not six total. The birds now will fly off and go back to their owners. All right, the players have played a few more rounds and it's back to the red player. And now the red player is going to uh, activate the laying card. When he does that, because he has two birds on here, he can turn in two nests to get three eggs. The other two players each have one on there and a nest. So if they wanted, they could turn those in and they would each get one egg apiece. And then of course, the birds would leave and go back to their owners. And the hatching works the same way. If you have two birds, you can turn in three worms, three eggs, and get three birds from the stock to put into your pool. If you have one, one, and one, you'll get one bird. All right, let's talk about the dominance card and why that is important when it comes to this initiative track. Let's say it is Yellow's turn, and Yellow has decided to go ahead and activate this card. When you activate the dominance card, you need to find out who uh, is leading that card, or who has the highest pecking order on that card. You determine that by who has the most birds on the card. Well, as you can see, all three players have two birds on it. So how do you determine the pecking order? Well, you use the initiative track. And when you are scoring dominance, let's, uh, let's just move these off here for just a second. When you are trying to figure out who has pecking order on the dominance card, you're going to look starting from the right to the left. And whoever is the furthest uh, right on this track will break that tie. The further right you are, the higher dominance you have. So in our example here, yellow is the furthest to the right, so yellow would break the tie. Yellow has the most dominance. Since yellow has the most dominance, he will take his birds and return them to his pool, but then he will take his yellow bird and move him down to the number one spot on the initiative track, uh, furthest to the left when it comes to this competition side. And we'll see why that's important in a moment. Next, you have green and red. Well, green is the furthest right, so the green breaks the tie between green and red. So green will take the place of red. Oh yeah! And now the initiative track has changed. Now, for the remaining players who did not have the highest dominance, they will take their birds and fly them to one of the other five cards. Their choice. They don't return them back to their pool. They have to go to another card. 
Okay, let's talk about the competition card and how scoring will work. Let's say it is the red player's turn, and as you can see, the players have been playing several rounds, and the red player's decided to activate the competition card on his turn. The competition card, to, for it to be activated, you have to have a minimum number of birds on it for whatever round it is. So this is the first round, so we have to have a minimum of four birds on this card. As you can see, there are four, so it can be activated. And because the red player has one of the birds on that card, he is allowed to activate it. The competition card is broken into three steps. The first step is the upkeep. And it says that for every bird you have over two, you have to pay one nest and one worm or you'll lose one bird. The red player has seven birds out here. One here, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That means he's going to need five nests and five worms to keep all seven of those birds. Now, paying the upkeep is optional, but if you don't pay it, you will lose the number of birds that you don't upkeep. The red player is going to go ahead and pay the five and five to be able to keep all of his birds. Now the green player has six birds out there, so he'll need to pay four nests and four worms to keep all of them. Well, he has the four nests, but he only has three worms. So he's going to lose at least one bird. He's going to go ahead and pay the three and the three. He doesn't have enough upkeep for that uh, sixth bird that he has. So he'll have to choose which one to send away. And he's going to send away the one from the competition. And that will go back into the stock. Bye. You want me gone? And the yellow player also has seven, so he would need five nests and five worms. He only has four of each, so he's going to go ahead and pay those four, but he's going to lose one of those birds. He's going to just go ahead and lose the one that isn't out on the cards already, and it goes back into the stock. Now, starting with the player who activated the card, which is red, uh, you are now allowed to move your birds to two different cards. So let's say the red player had two birds on here. He could now fly these two birds to any other two cards minus the competition card. You can't fly back to that. So maybe he'll fly here and here. Then working clockwise, the remaining players will get to do the same thing. That is step two of the competition, which is the relocation. And finally, the third step is going to be the scoring. Now, you will score each of the five cards in order, starting with feeding. The first thing you're going to do is see who has the most birds on that card. Well, feeding has two red and two green. When that happens, you're going to look again at the initiative track. Whoever is farthest to the left on the initiative track will win the ties. So in this case, green being furthest left, we'll break that tie and we'll get the four points and we'll move up four points on the scoring track. Red gets the remainder, which would be three points. Yellow won't get any points. Each of the cards then will be scored. And there are only two scores that can be given out on each card. And there are no ties, so you won't need to worry about that because the competition uh, side of the initiative track will break all ties. So if you have a bird on a card, for example, on this card, all three players are here, and red and green are tied. Well, green is furthest to the uh, left on the competition track, so he would get four points. Red has the next most with two compared to one for yellow. So red would get the three points, yellow would get no points. After you have scored all the cards, you're gonna move the round marker to number two. The birds will stay on in place on the cards as they are. And then you will start a new round beginning with the player to the left of the person who initiated this competition card. You'll play three rounds. Whoever has the highest score on the scoring track is the winner of the game. Okay, so that is Flock. Now, uh, component-wise, um, it's a mixed bag for me. Uh, I really like the wooden components. I think the worms are super cool and the fact that they uh, took the time to 
you know, make the nests and the eggs and the worms um, is a nice touch to it. The location tiles are really nice, thick stock. Um, they, and, and I like the matte finish on them. I like the artwork on them as well. Um, I'm not really sure why they went with individual location cards instead of just a game board. I know that the dominance and the scoring track are double-sided. I don't know what that kind of adds to the cost to have printed that on both sides, but I don't know. Personally, um, if they were going to go with uh, these single, well, since they did go with these single cards, you know, maybe they could have went with a, you know, a smaller box um, because there's a lot of air in in the box, and I, so I'm not sure what the point of that was. Also, I do not like the scoring track. I can't believe I'm saying this, but as far as the scoring track goes, I wish they would have used cubes. Not that I have anything against cubes, I just, you know, sometimes when you go that extra mile for the different components that you put in, you know, I like that. But to use the birds on this scoring track is very fiddly. When you have the birds here and here and they're moving around, uh, it's just... I don't know it's like I said it's fiddly and they don't fit on the squares so I'd rather they went with cubes really I'd rather they just had gone with a game board and put a scoring track around that because this I, I don't I don't like the initiative track uh, I like the concept of it I wish they wouldn't have put the numbers on there because it gets a little wonky when you're explaining it Oh, I'm in first. So, uh, what do you mean dominance goes from this way and initiative? Okay, yeah, there's arrows on here. But if they just, I mean, what's, they don't need the, you don't need the numbers. If you're just going to do the arrows, um, then again, you know, it, it, it gets, it makes it a little confusing when explaining it to someone for the first time. But it's, you know, that's, that's a minor issue. As far as the gameplay is concerned, for a worker placement game, it's pretty light. There's not a lot of meat on this bone here. So, when it comes to replayability, I don't know, There's just it's just not there for me. Um, there just isn't enough interesting things for you to do. I mean, you're collecting worms, and then you're collecting the nests, and then you're collecting eggs, and get more birds. You know, rinse, lather, repeat, or... Or is it I don't, I don't shampoo, know. <laughs> rather, lather, peat? You know what I'm talking about. I don't know. But what I do know is that um, it, it is a little on the light side. Also, as far as playing with two players, um, it's just not as much fun. I mean, you have some of these uh, cards that score four points and three points. Every card scores two times or two places so there's only one difference between you know some of these tiles when you are doing the scoring and so I don't think that is quite enough for me when you are playing a two-player game I think this game would best be played with three to five players I think you'll have better battles on the competition or on, well on the competition and on the dominance track and again, the dominance track is kind of neat how you have to, you know, try to take control of that dominance track so that you can move up on the competition track to help you score at the end of the game. With three or more players, I think the strategy becomes a little more important because you're not pay playing, paying, uh. <laughs> you are not uh, giving out points for third place, fourth place, or whatever. So that area control aspect becomes a lot more important. Uh, so, I would think that if you're playing this game with um, some new gamers or people who aren't familiar with worker placement games, and if you had three or more people, I think this would be a good introduction to get people into like a worker placement game and just to get them familiar with the type of mechanic that is with that sort of game. But for me, it's a, a little too light. 
And so for me, I can take it or leave it. I give this game a five. Now, if you've enjoyed this review, please take a moment to uh, leave a like below. Hit that like button. Uh, also hit subscribe and check out our other great video content. And once again, I thank you for stopping by. This Flash review was brought to you by the Arch Gaming Network. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook.